Go ahead. Hello everyone, once again, different surroundings. I'm back here on Long Island celebrating my dad's 65th birthday. I'm in my sister's basement filming this video. In today's video, I'm gonna be reviewing Rocky Balboa from 2006, AKA known as Rocky Six, but I don't know why they changed the, going from changing the titles from like Rockies like in numbers and just calling it Rocky Balboa. It's kind of weird, it makes no sense. Rocky Balboa also stars Burt Young as Paul in his final performance, and Milo Ventimiglia, who you all know from TV shows like Heroes and This Is Us. It also stars real-life boxer Antonio Tarver, who plays Mason the Line Dixon, and Geraldine Hughes. Rocky Balboa came out on December 20, 2006. The film grossed $152.3 million at the box office, and was well received by critics, fans, and audiences, and it was considered a breath of fresh air for the Rocky franchise after Rocky V and a rebound. I remember this movie came out when I was 13 years old, but unfortunately, here's a little fact. I didn't see this movie when it came out in the theaters. I saw this movie three years later after when it came out, around the time I was just becoming a Rocky fan when I was a teenager in high school. 
it was around the time this film came out, I had never seen any of the Rocky films. It's just crazy how like a Rocky film finally came out during my time, but I just didn't see it in the theaters when it came out. But I still got to at least see the film eventually, no matter what, and appreciate, and see how it was a much better film compared to Rocky V. It was a rebound and a home run for the Rocky series. In Rocky Balboa, we see how Rocky's been retired for over 20 years since he last fought in the ring. His wife, Adrian, died a couple years earlier from cancer. He now owns a restaurant named Adrian's, named after his wife. Rocky decides to come out of retirement for one last fight to fight current heavyweight champion Mason the Lion Dixon. I remember when I first saw this movie, I was a little bit skeptical of not knowing how this film was going to be, especially thinking about how, like... How did I make a Rocky film where Rocky's like in his 60s and he's still fighting? And like all Rocky fans, I was really shocked and surprised and amazed how this film was better than I expected. It was a rebound and a breath of fresh air to the Rocky franchise, especially after when Rocky V was a big disappointment. I mean, it wasn't bad or the worst, just uh, Rocky V, as I said in the last video, was one of the weakest of the series. But Rocky Balboa is that before the film like dives into how he wants to fight again for the first time, I like how the film like, opens up like slowly seeing like a day in the life of Rocky. We see how like he's like mourning the loss of Adrian, and also how like, we see how like him and his son have a little bit of a complicated relationship because of how that his son is a little bit embarrassed because of his last name. He thinks that the only reason why he got a job is because of his last name. Also, we see how, like, uh, Rocky's uh, son's boss is a little bit hard on him. The part, like, when he sees his son going to work and he runs into the boss, he takes a picture with his boss. It makes you wonder if, like, Rocky really visions, like, uh, punching Rocky's boss because of how hard he is on his son. Being a tough, a little personal. Seeing Rocky mourn the loss of Adrian kind of reminds me how, like, when my grandfather was really... Sad and depressed after when he lost my grandma to ovarian cancer over 20 years ago. It kind of like made me feel a little connected, seeing like what Rocky was going through in some ways, but in a different way. It also like kind of reminded me of like my grandfather to a certain degree. I also like how we see how like after when Rocky watches the uh, video game punching fight between Mace and Dixon, it kind of shows how like Rocky wanted to like prove a point that. Age is like just a number. I mean, yeah, he's 60 years old and maybe not be the same fighter he was when he was 30 years old. But he, I love how Rocky Balboa that this has like some of the best like motivational speeches of the entire Rocky series. Like for example, when Rocky's trying to get a license to fight Mason the Lion Dixon, he does very well on the test, but unfortunately the Pennsylvania Athletic Commission deny him to get a license. So Rocky gives a speech about how that he's trying to pursue something and also like what gives them the right telling him what to do, what gives them the right to tell anybody what to do about what to do, what not to do, and also like starting something and then you stop because someone told you to stop doing it. Also how like what happened to freedom of speech and also what happened to the pursuit of happiness. Also how like when his son is like embarrassed because of uh, his father's name. He tells him like a great line about how that it ain't about how hard you get hit, it's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. That line has stuck with me ever since I heard that in high school. It means no matter how hard we get hit in life, we can either choose to stay down or get back on up. Besides Sylvester Stallone's performance as Rocky, the rest of the characters and actors are fantastic and great, very lovable and very convincing and very believable. Seeing Burt Young as Paulie for one last time, it's very sad seeing how like, he feels guilty about the way he treated Adrian, also how like, he also mourns the loss of his sister, wishing that he had treated her better and feeling guilty about that. And also, like Rocky said to him that, despite how hard he was with her, she always loved him no matter what. One character I liked and adored in Rocky Balboa was Little Marie, played by Geraldine Hughes. Now, Little Marie was the character from the first film that Rocky bought home from a couple of street gang punks. What I think about this character is that she's not necessarily a love interest for Rocky. It's more like Rocky sees her as like a daughter figure, treats her like a daughter. 
because of his estranged, complicated relationship with his son. And her son's steps, he treats like a grandson. It's a great bond. Very believable, very convincing. It's in line Dixon, played by real-life boxer Antonio Tarver. Unlike Apollo Creed or any of other Rocky's opponents, Mason Line Dixon is more chill, laid back, down to earth, and he's not really mean or macho compared to Rocky's other opponents. Robert Balboa, Rocky Balboa's son, played by Milo Ventimiglia, despite being embarrassed and overshadowed by his father being related to a boxer, deep down he still loves and cares about his father no matter what. But after when he finds out that his father's going to fight again, he feels embarrassed and annoyed. But after when his father talks some sense into him, he meets Rocky at his mother's grave and he said that he quit his job because it was not working out and he didn't feel like he blended in, which is something we can all relate to in different ways. Talk about the fight scene between Rocky and Mason Line Dixon. One thing I forgot to mention earlier about with Rocky wanting to come out of retirement and fight again, there's only one question. What about his brain damage injury from Rocky V? How has that been ignored and forgotten? The final fight in the finale between Rocky and Mason Line Dixon is a much better, bittersweet, better justice ending to the Rocky franchise compared to Rocky V. Even though in the movie, Rocky loses by a split decision, one thing I like how like Sylvester Stallone did was that he put this and the alternate ending on the DVD for have Rocky fans to decide whether or not Rocky wins or loses to end the Rocky saga. Personally, in my opinion, I like the uh, alternate ending where Rocky does win because that's how like, I imagine like Rocky going out with a bang, winning his last fight, and then finally retiring. But that's just me personally. Everyone may have their own opinion about whether they want to see Rocky win or lose in his last fight. But to me, in my mind, he won the last fight. As I mentioned before my last past Rocky reviews, how like, the fights are so realistic. What made this like so realistic? It was like a modern day, like 2000s like fight scene. Especially how when you had like Michael Buffer, the announcer of the Let's Get Ready to Rumble. I don't even watch boxing, but I do know who Michael Buffer is just by hearing that voice like being so iconic for an announcing in the boxing ring. Here are my facts on Rocky Balboa. Carl Weathers wanted to reprise the role as Apollo despite that he died in Rocky IV. Carl Weathers was so upset about not letting Stallone having Apollo come back. He refused to let Stallone use his uh, fight scene image and replace it with uh, digitally enhanced instead of Carl Weathers' face. Was shot in 38 days, and Pedro Lowell played Spider Rico in the first Rocky film, reprises his role. Various scenes were improvised. The grave of Adrian Balboa's grave from the movie. I was once again inspired for Rocky Balboa from his real life experience as he got older. He was also inspired of when George Foreman was trying to make a comeback as a boxer in his later years. Turned down, reprising his role as Robert Balboa, Rocky's son. Too much into it between him and his father and being overshadowed by his father. Lester Stallone said that he made this film not being satisfied the way Rocky V ended. He originally intended to have this film being made in 1999, but the film was not greenlined until six years later. And as you see at the meat factor that Pauly paints, those were actually, uh... Burt Young's real-life paintings, because in real life he's an avid painter and an artist. As of 2020, this is the last Rocky film to be rated PG. Original simulation fight was based on the super fight from 1970 with Muhammad Ali against Rocky Marciano. Original draft, Adrian was supposed to come back for this film. However, Sylvester Stallone felt that the script was lacking emotion. So him and Talia Shera came on agreement in good terms of uh, writing off Adrian and not using Adrian in this film. People thought that maybe because of a disagreement is the reason why Talia Shera was not in this film. But Talia Shera said it was quite the opposite. They were fine on good terms. She agreed and respected Sylvester Stallone for not using Adrian in this film for a certain reason. Stallone based the idea of Rocky opening up a restaurant talking to customers about old fights and stories. 
based on what Jack Dempsey did, about old fights and stories, he'll give up half his salary to Antonio Tarver so that way the film was made. Sylvester Stallone shot in the film was the running of the steps of the Philadelphia Museum. Sylvester Stallone felt like that was a good way to end the character and retire the character by running up the footsteps because of how iconic it is. Tommy Morrison, who played Tommy Gunn in Rocky V, called Sylvester Stallone asking to reprise his role as Tommy Gunn, but Sylvester Stallone never got back to him. Originally, Sylvester Stallone wanted real-life boxer Roy Jones Jr. as the role for Mason Line Dixon. He left 31 messages, but Roy Jones Jr. never called him back. This film was originally going to be called Rocky VI, Puncher's Chance. Kind of a weird name for a title. Would have made more sense. They just called it Rocky VI to keep the tradition going of Rocky number titles. Stallone made this film. He originally wanted to do Rambo, but MGM gave him the green light to do this film. So he had to put Rambo on hold and do Rocky Balboa instead. Davilia. He said that the reason why he felt that he got the part to play in Rocky Balboa's son is because of a slight resemblance to Sylvester Stallone through facial, mouth, and lip expressions. Rocky Balboa, hope you liked it. Please like the video, hit the subscribe button, and hit that notification button to get my latest updates on my YouTube channel. Thank you, bye.